Here we have a simple web shop. It has a index page of products and individual product pages that you can click through to. The code looks like typical GraphQL code. We have a GraphQL request client using the GraphQL request package that links to all of the individual pages for products. And on those pages, we make GraphQL queries to get the product and we pass in a slug using GraphQL variables. Nothing out of the ordinary. We also have the client here that we import and we call that request function. In this video, we'll be using GenQL, which is a type safe GraphQL builder. And we'll use this to generate requests to our GraphQL backend, just using code. We can see in a quick example here on how this looks and we'll dive into this next. But first, let's just have a look at some of the benefits. The first one being that it supports auto completion when you are writing your queries. And it also will validate any of the types that you try to query. If a field doesn't exist, the IDE will tell you so. Let's begin by installing the GenQL dependencies. We'll need the GenQL CLI and the runtime dependencies. You'll also need to install GraphQL if this is a new package, but I already have this installed. Now let's begin by writing our first script using GenQL. We can invoke the GenQL CLI inside of our script, and we'll need to provide an endpoint to our GraphQL schema. In this example, I'm just going to use a pre-existing GraphQL schema that I have with some simple products. And this is inside of the graphcms.js file. Then we'll need to define the output and where the GenQL will output the generated schema and the client that it generates. In this case, we'll just use the folder generated in the root of the project. Then all that's left to do is run that script using npm run generate. You can see here inside of the directory that we have those generated files inside of the generated folder. We can see inside of the index, we have that client. So next we'll go ahead and modify the graphcms.js file and we'll import the create client. We can import this from the generated folder and we'll remove the existing GraphQL client import. And instead of instantiating a new GraphQL client, we'll use the create client function that was automatically generated for us. Then all that's left to do is provide the required argument that is the URL to the GraphQL schema. Then back inside of the index page, if we scroll to where we have the query for GraphQL, let's now update this to use GenQL. So I'll first remove the GraphQL request import and using the client from GraphCMS, this will now allow us to use some of the functions from GenQL. The most important one will be query. And this is where I'll provide an argument to the fields that I want to query. So we can see here that it's automatically generated for us and the IDE is showing us what queries we have available. So we want to get all of the products. So we'll query products. So we'll go ahead and fetch the slug name and the image URL. Now if we remove the previous GraphQL query, save this and run the dev server and head on over to localhost 3000, you'll see nothing has changed. It's working exactly like it did, but we're now using GenQL. Now let's go ahead and update the request for our individual product pages. So inside of the slug.js file, instead of calling cl client.request, we'll call client.query and we'll pass in similar to what we did on the index page, but this time we'll pass product and we'll pass an array of objects. The first object will be our filter. And we can see here that the IDE is telling us that we have a where property. So we can pass where the slug and the slug is what's given to us from the page params. Then the second argument to this array will be the fields that we want to query. So we'll fetch the name, description, price, and the image URL. Then all that's left to do is remove the previous GraphQL query because this will now be automatically generated for us. And we'll update the get static paths query as well. And similar to the index page, this time we'll just make a query to fetch all of the product slugs. And we can remove the previously written GraphQL query. Then all that's left to do is remove the GQL import from the GraphQL request library and over on localhost 3000, head to a product page and you'll see everything is working as we expect. These queries are now being generated from GenQL. GenQL also boasts a chaining feature. So on the client, if we call chain, we can pass in the query and using dot notation, we can now pass product. And inside of product, again, we can pass the where filter. And at the end, we can type get. And like we did before, we'll now pass in to the get function, the object for our name, description, and price. We'll also fetch the image URL. And if we head back to localhost 3000, you'll see nothing has changed. It all works as we expect. If we import everything from the generated GraphQL schema, 
what we can now do using the get function is spread in everything. And this will query all of the leaf nodes. So if we head to a product page, you'll see here that we have the name, price, and description, but we don't have an image. Because image is a relation, we'll need to type image and spread in everything. And now if we refresh and head to another product, you'll see we are now fetching that image.